Here at Will Alexander's Dog Show Tips, we try to bring you something that you all want to hear or see. So after a nationwide search, we found somebody. We found Marippy Woolridge. So here today on Will Alexander's Dog Show Tips, you get to hear from Marippy Woolridge. Don't forget, it's brought to you by ProPlan, nutrition that performs. Hi there, everybody. It's me, Will Alexander. I'm here today with Marippy Woolridge. Long time no see, Marippy. How have you been? I've been great. Good. You look good. Thank you. Things are well. What are you doing with yourself during this crazy time? This crazy time has been actually great, um, except for my dogs. When they see me coming, they run the other way. Um, if there were dog shows and I was still going to dog shows, they would be in perfect condition. But <laughs> I'm just bored, so I trim them. And then the rest of the house too. So trying to keep busy with not not looking at SBA or the PPP loans every five minutes. So yeah. yes. That makes it difficult sometimes. All right, well, let's get started. I wanna start at the beginning. Um, how did you get involved in dogs and how old were you when you got involved with dogs? I always wanted a, a dog and I wanted a, well, first I wanted a Yorkie, but that was, my parents wouldn't go for that. Um, and it was just cause they were cute. Um, but I wanted a Scotty. And by the time I was like 10 years old, they bought me a Scotty from a breeder from Puerto Rico. And I got my little pet Scotty and they taught me, they tr tried, they, they, they kind of talked me into showing it so they can make points for their dogs, which were so much So your better. parents showed dogs, and I didn't know that. No, my parents didn't show dogs. Oh, okay. The people that oh. I bought my little Scotty from. Okay, I misunderstood. And that's really how I, I went to classes in the parking lot of the supermarket in, in Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico, at the Puerto Rico Kennel Club handling classes since I was 10 years old showing my little pet Scotty. Ben Burwell, which people may, you remember Ben Burwell, poodle guy from, I think he was from a uh, New York area. He retired. Does sound familiar? Um, he retired in Puerto Rico and uh, he had show grooming available. And I took my little Scotty to get groomed for the dog show and he came back my dad used to look at him and say, I can see his brain thinking because he had shaved them like with a seven blade backwards or something. So, it, you know, that was Puerto Rico and he was a pet. I mean, why would you spend any time grooming it? But he was my little dog. I won juniors and people would come from the States. And, I, I, and that's how I met Ileana and Lita, uh, Ileana Miller, which was the president of the club for years, and Lita. And that's how I learned with the Afghans because they had Afghans and Salukis and Whippets. Um, and that's how I started showing dogs. And when did you start coming to the bigger shows? When, you, when did you start bringing yourself to the bigger shows? When I lived in Puerto Rico, I don't know if you ever went to Puerto Rico as a Canadian, but many handlers from the States used to go to Puerto Rico because they would bring their own majors. And in breeds that were difficult to get majors, they would bring four and one of the other sex, and they have majors galore. Um, Bill Trainer, and at the time, My Michael Dackel and um, Elliot Moore were working <laughs> for Bill. They used to come down to Puerto Rico with a ton of poodles and a ton of, of, of Ingies and all kinds of things and Datsuns. And, and I was, of course, Ileana, Ileana Miller by then. I was her little pet project. Uh, she's like, go, go help Michael and Elliot. Um, and that's how I started. I was thrown into that. I was 12 years old. Wow, that's great. And Bill Trainer. I would work summers for Bill. I didn't know that. I did when Michael and Elliot were both there. And that was an incredible experience. Well, I'm sure he was an amazing man. 
Yeah, he was. And uh, the kids and his wife. I mean, it was a, a great place to go. I used to sleep in the basement when I would spend the summers. And I house broke and taught aristocrat Dugan how to swim. I used to take him to the pond. He was just 10 months old. Wow. And that's how I got my Irish water spaniel from Mrs. Um, what was her name? Snelling. Snelling. She gave me a Dugan puppy. Uh, she was an amazing lady, Ann Snelling. She was an amazing lady on the peaks. And, you know, it's so I had a, a background that wasn't really terriers when I started out with but I was bound to get a good Scotty. And Bill kept saying, don't get involved with those terrier people. You stay, I mean, he really didn't want me to, but a Scotty I got. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it started. Those are great stories. I mean, we, Ann Snelling was is obviously is a legend up here, so. Absolutely, a great lady. Her dogs great. were amazing, and Bill was. We used to see Bill at the big shows, so. Yeah, I, um, she used to come down and Bill, um, Bill's older son uh, uh, would, his son would take pictures of Dugan and the pond and how he learned how to jump off the deck into the pond. It was fabulous. I mean, Can you take that famous picture of Dugan on the dock then, soaking wet? No, I was not there for that. That was done at a different time. But he learned to go in that pond when he was 10 months old. <laughs> and we used to take him down. <laughs> He was one of my favorite dogs. Yes, he was my, mine too. Then I worked for Bill Summers and Garden every year from the time that I was like 12 years old until. Wow, that's amazing. Until, yeah. So would, be, would Bill be one of your mentors then? Absolutely. Yeah. Learned, and Michael. Michael was a great teacher. Yeah. Dackel, you remember Michael Dackel? Oh, of course, of course. Um, I would be blow drying the Afghan special and all of a sudden I would have a brush smacked right on my, on the top of my hand. Don't bend that wrist. And you learn how to brush real quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bend the wrist when you're brushing. <laughs> yeah, that's for Michael. Great, great memories. Who would have been your terrier mentor then? Well, definitely Virgit and Clay. Yeah. Um, I got a Scotty from um, Dick Hensel. I saved all my money from working the summers and the garden, um, three or four gardens, and the Florida circuit, because I lived by then, I lived in Florida oh. for Bill. I saved all my money and be with my friend Cesar. You remember Cesar Rodriguez? He did yeah. all the Afghans. Okay, that was my first boyfriend. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, so we both figured it out, but he was my first <laughs> Cesar and I used to go to dog shows when we were, when I was young, you know, 15, 16 years old. He could drive, and uh, um, we bought a Scotty together. We co-owned our first Scotty until it was time for me to go to college, and the Scotty couldn't go with Cesar, and... Dick said, well, why don't you send it to Clay and Birgit? To Birgit, well, actually, he said to Birgit, <laughs> to Birgit. Um, I call her Bridget, to Birgit. Um, and that's how I met them. I mean, I lived in Florida. I was a 16-year-old girl in Florida. And I called them, and I said, you know, I have this dog, and Dick thinks he's a really nice one, and I'm leaving for college, and can I send them to you? And um, she took him, and the rest is history. I lasted one year and a quarter in college. When Clay called and said, would you work the Florida circuit? I said, yes. Well, that meant a lot to, to not go to different things. I played basketball. Those were big commitments to work the Florida circuit. So I gave it all up and went to work Florida circuit, try to go back to school. So what year would that have been? 76, 77. I went to Clay and Birgit's in, I think it was in 70. The, I worked that Florida circuit and, and then flew home, flew to California maybe that summer and stayed. Um, they lived in Palmdale in the desert at that time. 
and uh, yeah, before the old Rick moving to Sun Valley craziness happened. But um, yeah, I was with them from the beginning. When they moved from Chicago, they moved to Sun Valley, Palmdale, uh, Annola Valley Kennel Club. Um, and then that was it. I was hooked. How long were you with them? Three and a half years. I remember walking into the kennel the first time and they had a row of Scotties and on the backside a row of miniature schnauzers and I thought to myself, I will never, because they all look the same, will ever be able to tell their names and that will be the end of my job. Mm -hmm. But you know how it is. Oh, yeah. They're all different, right? <laughs> They're all different. It comes to you. And then after Clamberg, where'd you go then? Well, after them, I went out on my own. I, um, those were pretty turmoil times in California, in the whole world of dogs. There was a lot of things going on. Um, and Rick had just moved to Louisiana, to Baton Rouge. And there was a lot going on in the terrier world in Southern California. And I decided it was a good exit time from what was the nobody teaches husbandry like Birgit. Uh, um, conditioning, conditioning was everything. Um, and then nobody taught social politics and handling like clay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. You know, you're a quiet fly in the background because you're just the assistant falling asleep. But it was a great education. Oh, for sure. Great education. They all thought we were asleep in the back of the truck and we were listening to them. That's right. I never, I never close my eyes. <laughs> um, what would be, what be, would be your favorite breed then, Scotties? I, I would say Airedales and Lakeland. Uh, Airedales have been my love forever. Lakelands suit my lifestyle now more. I can actually trim them. Um, Airedales are just too much dog for, for me to trim now. But That's when I first started, I fell in love with Lady. That's when I first started following you. Yeah, Lady, uh, her mother, Mama Kaz, Lady, then Felix, Blair. I mean, it's been generations of really fortunate to have fantastic Airedales. Scott. Lady was the one that caught my eye up here, though. So. Yeah, Lady was. Uh, she, I took her to Canada. That's right. And she, West Coast. You took her on the West West Coast somewhere. Didn't the you? West Coast. Yeah, she had a great time. So did I. <laughs> you didn't get to see them like that back then. So. <laughs> no, she was really ahead of her time, and unfortunately, at the same time as Eddie's uh, Judy, I think it was Judy, and uh, if that bitch would have won. She had 22 seconds to the lakelet, you know? <laughs> you know, in Airedale, it does a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we're used to always, but you were young, you know, as your first, maybe it's the one that pays usually your, where all your learning comes from. And it's fortunate for you to have a really good one to do that with. The clients might have wanted you to have more experience, but it worked out. Okay. It so who would be your favorite dog then that you've shown or been a part of? That I've shown? Um, oh, my God. I love to show Blair. She was my heart. Um, yeah, Blair. That's uh, Spin. She was kind of a troublemaker. But <laughs> it was awesome to show. Yeah. <laughs> Always. Those you know, I've never... never yeah, Peggy Sue, too. Peggy Sue never let you down. Never. She was always there as long as somebody didn't slam a door too hard. But other than that, she was there a hundred percent if you had food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we figured out our dogs. I remember my English setter bit. She was so, she, I was worried about her because she would hear things. By the end of her career, she was rock solid and I was the spook. So. <laughs> yeah, it makes you, you know, overreact at everything. But at the end of her career, she could care less either. So uh, um, 
it was that's how they be, they be, become great ones i think when they overcome everything and then there they are well adele had this thing about force dries if she heard this screaming about force dry when she was in the ring her yeah. ear would start to flickers so i would send my assistant off to find the force dry and shut it off <laughs> <laughs> I used to have another Scotty bitch, Rosie, who hated door slamming. And I used to put, when they were in the breed, and I would just, I say, wait till, you know, it's time. And you'll know when it's time. They would stand at different doors and gardens, and none of them were slammed. <laughs> just for those two or three minutes that it took to do the breed. You know? <laughs> but it seemed like forever, right? <laughs> well, it did when people couldn't come in or out. <laughs> What do you what do you feel is your most favorite win then? What's your favorite win? Um, oh, it's, there's so many because it's at so many levels. Um, yeah. Not all best in shows are your favorite win, but definitely they are. Um, I mean, when going best in show at the Garden, of course. I mean, for all of us, anybody that's done it, it's that one step that you never think you'll reach and then when you reach it for me i uh new york um but that montgomery is still the elusive one you know <laughs> that's that's that in the heart of a terrier person uh that's that would be the great one I understand that. I, I've never won the Irish International, so I understand. Oh my God, you're kidding! Yeah. <laughs> I've been always, I've been right there each time, and never, <laughs> and it's always. Yeah. And sometimes with some dogs, just winning their national with that Standish Schnauzer bow, that was that was like a great win, great owners, great dog. You know, he was being oh, shown at the same sense. time of as Peggy Sue, so it was you know, a great win uh, for the dog, I thought. Yeah. So they're different levels. And the people make it exciting too. The owners really do. Right? The, and the team. The team, the owners, you know, that makes a huge, huge difference. What would have been the, the funniest thing that ever happened to you in the ring? Can you remember anything? Oh my God, some of them I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> um, funniest thing that happened. I don't think I can tell the stories. No. <laughs> I mean, there's the Andrew story, but somebody will get mad, pissed. <laughs> yeah. so I can't tell that story. We don't cause any controversy. <laughs> exactly. You know, there's the Lakeland story. There's the Airedale story in, in Airedale's in the middle of the ring under Jack Sims and people that, that were there, which were about 10 deep, uh, when Jack Sims was judging the breed of Devon and Airedales one year, um, they'll remember that story. That was a funny one, but I can't repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> one day over a drink. I have a lot of good stories, but. <laughs> well, if you weren't in, if you, oh, sorry, go ahead. You'll never air this if I tell the stories. <laughs> okay, so if you weren't in dogs, what do you suppose you'd be doing? I have absolutely no idea. No idea. I have been in dogs since I'm 10 years old. It's all I've ever done. What did you go to school for? <laughs> to play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I used to say for underwater basket weaving, but uh, I was pre-vet, but after a year and a half of working with, you know, doing that Florida circuit and then going and working the summer for, for Bergen and Clay, going back to school, that just, I knew I wasn't staying in school. So yeah. I, I, I played basketball for a half a second, but it was always dogs that I don't know what I would do. We own a boarding kennel now and I take care of my dogs at home. My wife works at the boarding kennel, and I take care of the dogs at home, which are a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a skill or talent that we wouldn't know about? I can cook pretty good. Can you? I'm a pretty good cook, so they say. <laughs> and I like to feed people. <laughs> well, that's good. That's entertaining. Um, how about superstitions? 
Superstitions. Handlers and their superstitions. Well, I think that a weekend that starts absolutely as backwards is a good sign. When everything goes wrong and you're like, I'm not going, I'm just not going, this is not meant to be. And you just push that, that over whatever happened that you should know you should stay home, turns out to be a good weekend. So when, sometimes when a lot of things are going on, I feel, well, we're going. But that was a long time ago. It's been like 20 years and I show dogs. <laughs> I always hated going to the shows, and if I had truck trouble on the way, it was like, all right, I don't want to go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was never much about going to the dog shows. I was about getting them ready. Yeah. And once they all got ready and they looked like each one of them could go best in show, they had to drag me out the door. <laughs> and that's for real. <laughs> all right. What past dog show person do you miss the most? Be it judge, handler, friend? Oh my God, so many. Yeah. You know, I was, I had so many friends in, in the Richard Guevara, Carlos, you know, Eras, Mark, and so many friends that are no longer here that would have been absolutely amazing in this world that people didn't, in the dog world that people didn't get to appreciate and learn from. Mm -hmm. Richard used to come up here a lot. We used to see Richard a lot. Yeah, he was a great, he had a great mind for dogs. Yeah. Great guy. Miss him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. um, so with all this time off, what are you doing? Well, you're trimming dogs, right? I'm trimming. <laughs> Just, um, you know, more things that you don't do when you know, I've been home for literally almost 20 years. I worked in the kennel for like 10 years and I'm pretty much retired. I groom a few dogs on the side just because I like the people that, that, that sold the breeders. Sure. Um, and other than that, I do my, 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 my dogs, my Lakelands, my chins, my Griffons. And that keeps you busy. No judging aspirations? I don't understand the American Kennel Club. I don't understand how lost they've become in what all this was about and the sport. I feel that um, when somebody goes into that department or that organization that can weigh out what is important in your applications um, and how you become a judge um, and treat people with, with the respect that they're deserved. There is many people sitting it out and you know it and I know it. And that, and that continues to show dogs because we all thought we would go one step further, but you know, it's 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 not an all fit, one for all and all for one type of business, and um, that's I'll stay home, breed good dogs. Yeah, it's frustrating though not having someone like you on the ring teaching us all about what you know. Right. <laughs> you can say that. I'm sure a lot of people like it that I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. One last question for you. Do you have any advice for a new handler? Some of them wants to have a, a career in dogs. Absolutely. I think that they have to forget. And some of them are handlers already. You know, I think of people that have a van and a, tack box. Um, there's a lot of those around. Um, they need to go back to the mentoring and to, you don't work for a handler for a few weekends and then work, you know, a summer and then you buy a van and get a tack box. Um, what you learn in husbandry, in care, 
is way more important than walking in the ring. I mean, that's the last thing you do is walk in the ring. Yeah. The dog has to be in condition. It has to be, you have to learn how to condition it, not only body wise, for trim wise. They say, why handlers win? Well, they put in a lot of work into this. They didn't drag it out of the backyard and went to the dog show. Um, and this young people and young handlers, no matter how good they're at, at junior showmanship, need to learn from the bottom up. They need to learn how to load a truck. Oh, how sure. You don't sleep at night if you can't see the light on, on that box truck. <laughs> oh. We've all ch had to sit and watch yep. that light in that box truck, you know, and they need I'm to just learn. It. <laughs> you know, and then there's not so many accidents and um, not that there's that many, but it, they're completely able to not have them if they, you know, accidents happen, but yes. there are ways for accidents not to happen. Let's put right. it that way. I agree. I agree. Well, thank you. I appreciate you doing this for me and for us. We get to see, see you and hear from you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. All is well there. Jen's good. All is well here. She is sitting over there. We spent all day doing crates. She's sitting right there. Hey. Hi, Hi Jen. <laughs> we, are, we're try we were right at the middle of painting the house. So there is one wall with one color, one wall with another color, another color, patches everywhere, and then we became quarantined, <laughs> locked down. So yeah, today we did training room out. <laughs> I saw your post about your crates. Oh. <laughs> Aren't those fabulous? Oh, I used to love them. Yeah. Those three, and then you can open them. Great. I got rid of all my crates. I have like two crates. I just called Chris and I said, come and pick up anything you want. There was a couple of 700, you know, good poodle crates. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, again, I appreciate this. Thank you so much. And uh, I hope you hope the best for you through all this. And thank you. And Jen, both you send my love too. And we'll uh, see you down the road somewhere. See you somewhere. I'm sure. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Well, that was good. It's nice to hear from Maripu. It's nice of her to invite us into her home. It all looks well there. Her and Jen look well. Well, if you like what we are, we're doing here, make sure you press like, share, and subscribe. And there's also a notification bell you can press too as well. And if you want to send me some of your comments, you can send them to dogshowtips at gmail.com. Or if you want to find out what's happening in our world, you can look at willalexander.net. Don't forget, we have all kinds of videos in our library to look at. And also below there, there are some links to my grooming videos as well. Hope you have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.